What's going on? It's Jason Heath, and I have gotten a lot of requests over the past year to put out a follow-up video about how I use Foursquare. I went through and did a tutorial of Foursquare, which is an app I use all the time for reading music and for working with students and for conducting and organizing events. I've become a total diehard fan of this app. Just love it, sing its praises. And today we're going to take a look at how I've utilized this app to speed up my learning of music, my working with people, my sharing of music, my taking of notes. I just can't say enough good things about this app. Let's dig in. All right, we got my iPad Pro here. We're gonna open up Foursquare. You notice my app icon is a different color because I have Foursquare Pro. It's only like $10 a year or something like that. So I just wanna give them a little bit of support. But here is how I have Foursquare organized and it has worked wonderfully for me this past year. If I go into my set lists, I'll get out here. Current is what it sounds like. It's just what I am working on right now on the bass. So this is my bass practice. I also use Foursquare for conducting and for teaching and all that kind of thing. But this is my personal playlist. And then we have these other playlists here too. I have a couple of online courses I'm working through. So I have the PDFs from those, Fractal Fingering and Beginner to Bandstand, as well as Jazz Bowing. And then I do a lot of events. And I find it super helpful to just take all the music that I'm doing for a particular event and putting into one set list. So here, this just happened, the Golden Gate Base Camp 2019. These are the pieces that my student groups were doing. So if I go into, let's find one, Slavonic Dance right here. This is the score. And I have my foot pedal set up so that I can flip pages. You can see I've used the Apple Pencil to make it a little bit easier to see where all the repeats are and that kind of thing. And so I have that music. I have music that I am performing. So I was playing Marcas de Pasión, so you can see right here. And the great thing about Fourscore is I, since I have a foot pedal set up, I can turn the pages so I can read off the score, which is something I've been doing more for uh, chamber music. And I love this feature of Fourscore. I didn't realize that it how useful it was until the last few months, but you can attach an MP3 file to any one of these uh, PDFs. Here's how you do it. It's, it, it's not hard, <laughs> but it takes a little bit of doing. You have to go into files and, and you, you have a four score folder in files and this has all your pdfs and everything but you can also put mp3s in here so you can email them to yourself airdrop them to yourself but as long as those mp3s go in this folder then when we go back to four score or just this when we go back to four score we can click on the title name and you'll see you've got layout, you've got set lists, and then you've got audio right here. And I can go in and I can either add from iTunes or I can click this one to, to choose from anything that's in my files app on the iPad. So I just load this up and I attach it. And once it's in there, it is so useful because I can, first of all, just play the track. <laughs> stop you can actually uh, change the tempo and I find that it's really helpful to go three-quarter tempo or even half tempo but it does a remarkably good job keeping the music sounding not too strange when you slow it down so for this piece I actually practice it slower these were two of the three musicians I was actually performing this piece with so what a great way I just take their live performance slow it down listen to it practice along with it and if you're playing something and you need to transpose you can go up and down semitones or even if it's a little bit sharper flat you can adjust the sense so that is a super cool thing that I've been using now, for events, I don't just keep my music in there, but I also keep the schedule for the event. So I take notes with my Apple Pencil, and I and the way I get these in, by the way, uh, it's something I've made a lot of use of this past year, is Darkroom. So if you click Darkroom, you can then choose to add from uh, photos, or you can take photos so I could I'm not going to take this photo but I could take photos and uh or actually here I'll take I'll take one so here we go so you just so we'll take one you can square it up press the button 
and let's say we wanted to keep that, which in real life we wouldn't, but we'll just say save, give it a name, just, and there it is. So then what I find myself doing a lot is going in and cropping. So I can go in, select the crop tool. Oops, not share, crop, although I could share. And then you can zoom in, you can get it straight and all that kind of good stuff. So crop it and then you got it. It's, it's just like any other PDF in your uh, library. I'm gonna go and get rid of that though because I do not need that. Just delete. By the way, you, when you go into all scores here, this I've got several gigabytes of music here. It's just, it, it gets to be so useful and easy. Like let's say I wanted to share this alternate blues changes. I just go in here. I can either go to this share button here, share it out, PDF, annotated PDF, four score format, or just within this menu here, I can just flip and share. So that's extremely useful. And then, I have a folder here called past events. So if I'm wondering, I, I was conducting the all city middle school orchestra here in San Francisco. So I can go in and I can see what did we play. It's got my markings on it and everything. And I, I love using different colors just within Fourscore to indicate different things like you can see here. And I've actually really enjoyed the experience of conducting off of the iPad. I didn't think I would because in a sense you have half the real estate than you would with two pages, but you're always looking down at the same place. And if you want to record a bit of rehearsal, you can do that. And you can also open up multiple tabs. So what I was doing for this piece is I had the score here, but I sometimes wanted to see what the parts looked like. So I would take and drag, uh, if I can do that right, try one more time. I, there we go. So now I've got both the score and let's, rather than craning over the first violin section, I can actually just look at their part. And sometimes, especially for the younger students, it's nice to say, look, look at the third line. Let's talk about this. So that is uh, quite useful. So I've got my past events, I've got my current events, I've got my private students, each one of them gets their own set list. And then I have just helpful lists, I probably should make more of these, but easy bass ensembles, different, different this and that. I try to keep this current list to what I'm actually doing so I can just go in here and I can just start the beginning and then I can double tap actually in Foursquare Pro and I can just go between all the different exercises. So I'll give you some examples of how I use the various annotations. You can see this is a piece I've been working on, the Nicholas Walker Chorale. And I love being able to zoom in like this and really get in and, and write neatly. And I can turn these annotations on and off by going to annotate. And then we have their layer options. So you can have layers for individual pages. I can turn that all on or off, or I can add another layer. You can have up to eight and I can add a new layer just for the score. In terms of getting stuff onto the iPad, that is a, a, a process. <laughs> uh, so lots of scanning of PDFs over the years. I've been kind of building this library for over a decade. So uh, this is, I've, I've done a lot over the past year, but I had a lot done already. And I find that once you really commit to it and you sit down and you really get the info you want in there, then it becomes useful. So I've got all my composers and, and I also have genres, which I do a lot of bass coaching and teaching and that kind of thing. And so this is helpful. I can say, all right, let's look at quartets. And then I have them uh, by key and by difficulty. So I can say, all right, let's find, and one dot is easy, three is the hardest. And I have these ranked basically just for students. They're not, if I was gonna go play them, but it's for people I'm working with. So one is just about anybody can play it. Two is, uh, you need to have a few years under your belt. And three is something that I would play or like an advanced high school student would play. But it's great, because you can say, all right, let's just find some easy quartets. Here you go, we can get in here and we can look, oh, here we go, Canzonetta, A minor, boom, right there. And then I, let's say I, I was thinking about this for the Golden Gate Base Camp, I would then click, go to set list, and then I can just add it to the Golden Gate Base Camp set list right there. It's great, so you're not duplicating anything, you're just kind of tagging that within the set list. And I do that with students all the time because a lot of students are working on the same pieces. And then you can make, I'm trying to remember because they updated it and it's called something different now. 
So the way you do it is, let's go in, let's find uh, just a random base part. Here we go, caravan. So in this menu right here, there's the button edit. So you click edit and you can select and you just hit clone. And then all you do is it, it gives, see it just clone that right there. And you say done. And now this is identical to this, see? And you can change the name. Uh, like for, for Bill, you know, if I had a student named Bill, uh, that would be his part. And then I can add annotations on this part, like, ooh, gotta look at that. Uh, we're gonna crescendo there. And that will affect the part for Bill, but the original part has no markings. So that is a super great way to share the same music and then you can just delete it like that and and you don't have to worry about duplicating things and that sort of thing people can have their own clean copies of parts in terms of getting things on the ipad i am a huge fan of the app scannable whoops scannable uh, this is by evernote and it does a remarkably good job once you get good at it, it's almost as fast as going to a scanner. That's great. Obviously, a photocopier uh, that can convert to PDF or a printer where you can feed them in. That works great, too. And I do find myself using Darkroom a lot. It's a little bit more fiddly, and the files end up being bigger than if you scan in your PDFs using some other method. But I love to get them in there, and I love to get the composer name, as much metadata as I can. So tag it any way that would be helpful. The genre, I usually, it's it's what sort of, is it a septet? Is it a solo? Is it a duet? Is it a bass and piano? Is it orchestra or whatever key um, rating I really only use that to indicate what the best things are so that when I'm flipping through my library real quick I can I can sort by rating so see here I go rating um, I have to get to something that's a little bit got more stuff in it, like quartet here we go and rating so so I've the things that I like and that I use a lot I give them five stars basically and then I just don't necessarily rate everything else that's why I'm using Foursquare these days. I found it so great for keeping myself organized. I feel like my brain sort of flips into the correct modality. So if I'm uh, practicing this new course right here, I'm in jazz mode, and then I get out of that, I go into what I'm doing on a daily basis, and then when I'm working with a student, I go in and we're on that list, and it's just super, super useful. Can't say enough good things about that app. You can find it at Foursquare.com. Co. So that's a look inside Fourscore and how I use it. I hope you found this helpful. If you're not subscribed, go ahead and click that button and we'll see you on the next one.